While the ultimate evil was distracted by demons and the undead, the Alliance was able to regroup. The young Joffrey had followed King Robert onto the throne and was determined to avenge his father's death. To do so, he organized an important political marriage. He invited all the nobles of the kingdom in order to gather their armies into one place. They would launch a major joint strike against the Horde. All the nobles of the Alliance's kingdom had been invited to the wedding of Robert's son, Joffrey. If they were to join together to form an army, it would create a force that could even go up against the might of the Horde. Of course, the insidious evil was not planning to simply give up just like that. After all, these nobles had to travel there first, and such trips were notoriously susceptible to all kinds of little accidents. There were several routes that led from various parts of the country up to the castle. The thoughtful evil would have to keep an eye on all of them to take out the advancing nobles in time. Two extremely powerful fighting creatures had joined the ultimate evil, but had been lost in an underground landslide. They were probably still alive, but would need to be dug out. There was a small village close by, inhabited by tiny creatures, pixies. They were very kind-hearted, cheerful and friendly. The mere thought of them left a nasty taste in the Gargamelesque evil's mouth. Obliterating these good-hearted creatures from the overworld would drive the esteem in which the ultimate evil was held to new dizzying heights. This, technically speaking, would unlock new research, which could prove to be essential. Little Snots had discovered one of the lost creatures, a mighty troll juggernaut who came with an absurdly high amount of health points and defended itself with strong roundhouse blows.
It's payday. Hopefully no one has arachnophobia. A spider nest has been discovered. Logs have been piled next to one of the paths. With a nudge, they could be used to block the way. The Pixie Village was still undestroyed. It stood there, proud and untouched, as if it were mocking the ultimate evil, which it probably was. The little snots had dug up one of the lost creatures, a mighty orc ironhide, who, thanks to its incredibly hard armor, could shrug off even the most powerful blows with a yawn. It joyfully rejoined the army of the ultimate evil. Oh, look. The first a loud rumble announced the release of the log pile, which completely buried the road. No more nobles would be able to arrive along this path.
It's payday. Surprisingly, Ted Stark, the one who wore fur once Winterfell, arrived at the castle and immediately joined the throng of revelers. The careless evil was a little ashamed that it had not managed to stop the noble it had so wanted to kill. A drunken group of revelers broke away from the wedding party and started to wander towards the ultimate evil's dungeon, slurring wild threats. The fools would soon regret this profoundly. There are enemies in your dungeon. Enemies have entered the dungeon.
It's payday. Spiders have spread throughout the underground. Another nobleman was on his way to the new king's wedding. Waldo Frey was known for his racy parties and had an entourage consisting entirely of his own offspring. Although Waldo was a master at hiding, the stubborn evil was not about to let him reach the castle. The eagle-eyed evil easily found and destroyed Waldo Frey. His days of hide-and-seek were over. Enemies have entered the dungeon.
Payday. Pixie Village was laid to rack and ruin by the Horde. Word of this heartbreakingly evil act quickly spread among the insidious evil's creatures. Elated by such an amoral act of bravura, the little snot started making plans for an even more impressive throne room.
The arrival of another nobleman was imminent. Jamie Oliver. No, Manchester. Sorry, I read that wrong. His cooking and fighting skills were legend... Wait for it. Derry. The grim-faced evil was not impressed by this at all. Payday! Jamie Kennedister, I mean Lanchester, bit the dust, defeated by the ultimate evil's horde. What would his sister say? A strange odor spread through the ultimate evil's dungeon. It vowed that in the future it would eat fewer beans.
It's payday. Defend the throne room. Yet again, another nobleman was on his way. God, this is slowly beginning to feel like a tower defense game. This time, it was Jontron Snow. To save time, all the funny stuff has just been deleted and the ultimate evil is now simply planning his destruction. John Tron Snow was no match for the ultimate evil. You know nothing, John Tron Snow. It might be because you're dead now. <laughs> Thank you. 
Payday. Another no- oh, oops, hang on, that's not a nobleman. Peter Relish took care of the realm's finances. Actually, he was not a nobleman, but his lack of manners had led to him being given the name of Lord Middlefinger. Of course, the ultimate evil did not care about such trivialities, but did arrange for his earliest demise. Lord Middlefinger's skills in verbal abuse were no protection against the snarling creatures of the Horde. He, too, would not be partaking in any festivities.
It's payday. Spiders have spread throughout the underground. Seems this realm has more nobles than I've had hot dinners. Another one. Ransom Bolton was on the way. There's little good to say about him. His penchant for torture made the ultimate evil feel quite kindly disposed towards him. Despite this, however, he did not reach the castle alive.
Though the ultimate evil found Ransom Bolton's fondness for unconventional torture practices one of his better points, it did in the end help to ensure his demise. Payday. There are countless spiders pouring out of a room that was accidentally unearthed. Disgusting.
Sandman Clegane, a feared warrior, was just setting out for Joffrey's wedding. The careless evil should be wary of his strong army. Under no circumstances must he be allowed to reach the wedding party. Sandman Clegane had slurped his last cup of tea and lay on the ground like a whipped dog. The violence-obsessed evil had triumphed once more. It's payday. Carl Franz von Romland was on the way to the celebrations to offer his congratulations to Joffrey on his wedding day. He was particularly known for his war hammer. Get it? <laughs> war hammer. No, you don't get it, do you? Oh, never mind, just stop him.
Karl Franz von Realmland had little to counter the Horde with and fell to the forces of chaos. That'll teach him to sneak into another fantasy universe. Another nobleman. Will this never end? This time, it was Arthur Minithrill. Arthur was still mourning his father, who had recently passed away under mysterious circumstances. The ultimate evil swore that he would unite him with his father very soon. It's payday. Your dungeon is full of yogurt. Yogurt? What's this all about? There's absolutely no yogurt. Oh, oh, it's supposed to be a funny illusion, I see. Very funny. Arthur Minithril was defeated. Once again, the ultimate evil had triumphed. Wait, didn't he just twitch a bit? No, sorry, my mistake. Would be silly if he suddenly arose again as an undead, wouldn't it? <laughs>
Everything must come to an end. Even nobles arriving. The last of them was on the way. Oberon Mattel was traveling in search of his sister's murderer and selling amusing toys on the side. Both would prove of no help to him because the ultimate evil had already signed his death warrant. As Oberyn Mattel went to the ground, a tacky toy doll representing an unrealistic ideal of beauty slipped from his hands. It would be interesting to pursue this further, but the ultimate evil had no fascination for toys, just chaos and destruction. Payday! At last, the endless stream of wedding guests dried up. The celebrations in the castle were about to begin. The wedding crashing evil estimated that it would take about six minutes before the wedding guests had built up enough Dutch courage to start a major attack on the dungeon.
It's payday. was complete. Without further ado, they decided to attack the nearby dungeon in celebration of the occasion. Unfortunately, it was the ultimate evil's dungeon. It chuckled inwardly and got ready for the attackers preparing to roll in. Enemies have entered the dungeon.
The Alliance's major offensive had failed. The repulsive evil's creatures cheered. The ultimate evil thought such behavior way too cheesy. It gave a few of the celebrating little snots a clip round the ear and began the preparations for an attack on the wedding. The departing wedding guests left King Joffrey back in the safety of his castle. Yet there were relatively few guards on duty. This was an ideal opportunity for the insidious evil to reunite father and son in the grave.
Horde of the Unstoppable Evil ensured King Joffrey and his wedding party came to a sticky end. This event would later be recorded in the history books under the name Bloody Wedding. Not very pithy, I know, but at least it prevents any licensing issues. Paying no attention to this in the slightest, the unspeakable evil now turned its attentions to the main goal, King's Ending. Far from the Horde, an army of demons are gathered under the leadership of an entity calling itself the Chaotic Evil. This flaming legion slowly moved south and found itself roaming the Funhorn forests of the Elves. There were truly evil deeds to be accomplished there. <laughs>